Good morning, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Bible study. My name is Shijebe Ayomi Dingwaya. Sorry. How was your day? Trust you're doing fine. Welcome to tonight's Bible study. Okay, I know Tosi taught us on visions last week, so we'll continue from, we'll continue from there today. So the topic for today is visions, the preceding word. Before then, I just want to say a word of prayer. A word of prayer. Let's pray that God will open our eyes. Open our eyes. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our understanding that will come to know the true meaning of visions and and we will understand what we are being taught today. Let's begin to pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay. Still on visions. Okay, let's open to let's open our Bible to first Samuel chapter three. Chapter three, verse one. Okay, it says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days there was no open vision okay this bible verse actually compares the word of god with vision vision so we can say god speaks to us through visions too okay let's open hebrews chapter one hebrews one verse it says god who has sown right times and in diverse manners Spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the word. Okay. Visions is another way of God communicating with us, the medium of God's communication with us to get. Okay, reading from Acts chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 17. It says, and it shall come to pass in this in the last days, yet God, I'll part of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So understand that in these times God is speaking to us through visions, prophecy, and dreams. So it is an active way of God communicating with us. Yeah. Okay, what is visions? Vision is like the ability to see. Yes. Okay, so let's open Acts chapter 9. We'll be reading about Paul's conversion. Okay, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them back to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, who thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and shall be told thee what thou must do. Okay. Reading from verse 10 also, it says, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the streets, which is called straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of that source, for behold, he prayed. Okay, we can see that through visions, God communicated, God communicated to Paul and also to Ananias. So through visions, God can bring bring about clarity about destiny about assignments to us it is an activity of god communicating with us okay reading from luke chapter one story of zechariah father of john baptist okay luke chapter one okay from verse five it says, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the cause of Abia, and his wife was the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both, they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God, in the, other, in the order of his cause, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense where he went to the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying with doubt at the time of the incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel of the Lord said, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer 
his head, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Okay, they were seeking the fruit of the womb, and God brought about an answer to them through a vision. Yet, so it is an active way of God speaking to us in these times. God, we do not have to be stereotyped to to hearing God verbally. You get it is like a more receptive way of God of God speaking to us. Okay, John chapter one. Reading from John chapter one also. John chapter one from verse thirty two. It says, "And John bear record saying." I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto him, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit of descending, the Spirit descending, sorry, and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. So how John could bear record that, okay, this is actually the Son of God. He said, The one who sent him said, You will see. He said, You will see the Spirit descending upon him. So God can actually bring um, clarity to us about certain issues through vision. Yes, like it is an evident way of God speaking to us because you're actually seeing. So what you see appears more real to you. You get. Okay, vision. I wrote a vision comes to capture our attention. It is important to have a good understanding of the different types of vision and states. Okay, before, before I continue, yes, like I said before that it is, Another medium of God communicating to us, aside hearing God's audible voice, you get from dreams, prophecies, yes, visions is, a, is another way that God speaks to us, and it is actually a receptive, a kind, because we are not like, someone is talking to us, we are seeing pictures, and the funny thing about vision is that it is a creative way of God speaking to us, because we are not just, like God is not just showing you a black picture every time. You can bring different pictures to mind. You might be seeing a human being. You can you might be seeing letters. You might be seeing signs. You might be seeing symbols. Pictures of different things. So it's like God is a creative way of God speaking to us. And like Tosi mentioned last week, there are different types of visions. You get there are different types of visions. You mentioned open visions, trances, like that, like that, like that. Yes. So it is very important that we do not stereotype our hearts to a certain way of God communicating with us. Like I said before, that the only way John could be a record that okay, this is the Son of God was through a, through it was he seeing the Spirit descending upon him. So like he was sure that okay, this, um, the one who sent me said that I will see, like you will see with your eyes. So it was through a vision that John could be a record that okay, this is the Son of God. Did we get yes, okay. God spoke to Daniel through visions, like God regularly communicated with Daniel through visions, through visions, through visions. So if you read through the third book of Daniel, you just be seeing different visionary encounters that Daniel had. You get, they were not really like, he had visionary encounters, different types you get. The Bible did not really mention, did not really state too many times whereby, okay, God was speaking to Daniel's ears, God was, like it was, just talking about what he saw in a vision, he had a dream, he had this and he had that, and John, um, Daniel gave us a proper way of interpreting visions. Okay, Daniel chapter 1, verse 17. Okay, I think the king dreamed, then he was looking for someone that would interpret his dream. Okay, read it from verse 4. It says, Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the king know to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and decided of the king that he would give him time, that he would show the, show the king the interpretation. There are times whereby we have visions and we cannot interpret it at that particular time. Like, we should not be in a hurry to, okay, okay, because... You want to make a decision. Okay, what is this vision saying? I need to know the meaning. Like, if you don't, if you, if you are not able to get that, to get the meaning of the vision, the interpretation, at that spot, at the spot where you got the vision, it is important that you just take your, like, go to an isolated place and take time out to pray, just like the way Daniel did. Okay, let me continue. So then, then Daniel went and decided of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Anania, Michelle, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not 
perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. So one very important thing is that in interpreting visions, we need God, yes, we need it's is true prayers because it's God that is showing you that thing. So you will get the result, I mean you get the interpretation also from God. So it is important that you take time out to pray to get the interpretation of what you are seeing. You are seeing sometimes you can be seeing symbols, you can be seeing different things. Your mind might not be able to capture at that moment. Okay, what's this what's the meaning of this thing? What's the meaning of this thing? So it is important that you okay, you take like you isolate yourself to get the proper meaning of that vision you get. Okay. Moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Okay, vision can come to change our perspective about things. And this can bring about transformation. Okay, let's read Acts chapter 10. From verse 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the house top to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending on him as it had been a great heat, neat at the four corners and left down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the earth. And there came a voice to him, say, Rise up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God has cleansed, thou come not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now why Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was son in Peter, were, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, get thee down and go with them. Doubt thee not if I have sent him. So the only way Peter could, okay, could only believe that, okay, God has sent these people to, to him was through a vision. Was through a vision. And when he has seen it, the angel of God already explained to him, when those men came, he doubted, like, he could not doubt again, you get. So it is an evident way of God speaking to us. It's an evident way of God speaking to us. Yes. Okay. There was this um in the story of Daniel, like when we read through Daniel, there's this thing I read in the book called Revelation Fixation, whereby okay, you are seeing a vision. Yes, your your mind is not stopped, you are not thinking about other things, but your focus is on what you are seeing, what you are seeing, because in um, when you are in a visionary encounter or a visionary state, God brings different things. Actually, when it's going to be a motion picture, like or a moving picture, you are seeing different. So it's important that you are focusing on every details that is being shown. Okay, you are seeing a tree, you are seeing a wall. It is important that you get the whole picture, like you, you get an understanding of what you actually see, because instead of God does not want to, instead of you know a verbal when God is doing okay, if it's a verbal communication or the reverse, God just speak, do this and that. That one is very simple. Do this and that, and you write it down. But through visions, you are the one that is receiving. So it's important that your mind be set so you can see, so you can be able to understand what you are seeing. Like, it's important that you fix your eyes on what you are seeing. You get at that particular point when you are having that visionary encounter. Yes, that is very, very important. Then spiritual sensitivity. Spiritual sensitivity. Elisha. Elisha. Okay. Very quickly, Second Kings chapter six. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay, reading from verse fourteen it says, "Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was ridden early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said unto him." Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Sure, at that particular time, the Azai did not see the chariots or fire or something. So he was scared now. You get now. They want to kill you. Yes, he was scared. Okay. Okay. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee. Open his eyes that he may see that the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. Behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha. So vision can come to take away fear. Because at that particular point, when 
um, Gehazi saw that his fear was taken away. You get, and he was confident that, okay, okay, they are with us, and more than they are more than um, this army that is trying to overtake us, or something, something like that. Yes. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smile these people. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Spiritual sensitivity. Elisha did not pray that he should. God should open his eyes to see. Like, it was, it was a reality to him. Like, he, the chariot of fire has always been there for Elisha. You get so. We can come to a particular point whereby we are highly sensitive spiritually. Like, like we don't even need to pray that, okay, God, open my eyes to see these things. Like, okay, you just open your eyes, you're just seeing things, you're just seeing things like that. You get. May God help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, let's read Ephesians 1, verse 18. Says, okay, from verse 7 says that the God of our Lord Jesus by his Father glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that he may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints is. Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. Okay, I'm reading the story of Belshazzar. Okay, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. And Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring down, bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes' wives and concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote, okay, just read it. They saw a vision. They saw a hand he gets. They were just doing their normal thing, okay, face, dancing, eating. Then they just saw, they just saw a hand writing on the wall, like that, like that, like that. Then the king told them to bring out the astrologers, the soothsayers, that they would tell them, okay, what is the meaning of this thing? What, like, why is this handwriting? Like, what, what is he trying to say you get? Then the king called his wise men and on and on like that. Okay, reading from verse 11. Say, there is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and days of the father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods was found in him. Yes, and I read from that Ephesians chapter one that uh, that um, sorry that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. You get so before we can interpret any visionary experience that we are having, we need light. You get you need wisdom. You need understanding. In Daniel chapter one, the Bible says talks about that that Daniel understood by book. So Daniel had knowledge of so many things. He had gathered knowledge of so many things. You get. Daniel had knowledge, and the Bible said that God blessed Daniel with interpretation of visions and dreams. You get. So, it says for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding and interpretation of dreams and showing of our sentences and dissolving of doubt were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be caught, and he will show the interpretation. Like they were very certain that okay, when this guy Daniel will come, he will give them the interpretation because he had a track record that okay, there was no vision or dream he brought to Daniel that he would not interpret. He had the spirit of God in him. He had the spirit of excellence, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding to interpret dreams, to interpret visions like that, like that, like that. And he was brought before the king. And uh, okay, read from Exodus, and I heard of thee that thou can make interpretation and dissolve doubt. Now, if thou can read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with this, with this, and that. Sorry, because I can't. Then verse 17 says, Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, thy rewards to another. Yet I'll read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. Then Daniel just gave the interpretation like that. Daniel was not there when when they had this vision and all, but because he was a man full of understanding, full of the spirit of God, full of wisdom, he just gave them the interpretation. And like I said before, when Daniel wanted to interpret um, the king's dream, 
he isolated himself, he and his friends, like he and his colleagues, and prayed to God, like, okay, it's only God, like, God, just have mercy upon us, because um, to interpret, it is one thing for you to see visions, it's another thing for you to interpret, because the, the instructions comes from the interpretation, it's not all about the ecstatic experience, okay, 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 I saw an eagle, okay, okay, I saw this, I saw that, and I started crying, okay, why were you crying? After you cried, what happened to you? Okay, what's the transformation? Uh, and you have nothing to say. Okay, okay. So why did you see the vision you get? So it is important that we are able to interpret our visions rightly. Okay, there was something somebody was saying when we had a vision that um, there are two different people. Like maybe one person, they had the same kind of dream. In that dream, God showed you maybe a golden eagle. And because of knowledge and ignorance, he interpreted it as okay. It is one power. He, um, he interpreted it as maybe the ego is coming to attack him. You get he had a wrong interpretation, and he now took an instruction according. He, he took like he was directed according to his interpretation. You get he interpreted the vision as okay, maybe something is trying to arm him. The ego is trying to arm him. So so maybe he now he now started praying that oh God God anything that is trying to arm me blah 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 blah. This thing okay. okay. Then another person had the same kind of vision, but he interpreted it another way. And through his own interpretation, he was directed different. So, directed differently. So, our interpretations of visions this is actually very important. So, we can receive directions rightly. You get it's one thing for you to have that aesthetic experience, it's another thing for you to get the right direction. Yeah, God is right, trying to tell you that, okay, A Y, I want you to do this thing, but you are seeing another thing. That's why. Prayer is very important. Spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, spirit of understanding is very important. That's why in the book of Daniel, they talk about, okay, Daniel was a man. He, he could interpret dreams. He could interpret vision. The spirit of God was in, in him. Spirit of wisdom, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, and all like that. And it's also recorded in the book of Daniel that Daniel was regular in prayer, as you get. Daniel was regular in prayers like that. So he was a man full of prayer. Yes, it was a man full of prayers. And like I said before, that vision is a creative way of God speaking to us. The first time God shows you a vision, he might just show you that it's something that you might feel, okay, this is very important. It is very simple to interpret. And another time, he show you one hand like that. I feel, okay, okay, because I was able to interpret that in the first time. Okay, I can just use the knowledge I had before to interpret this thing this time. It, it, it doesn't... Um, it is not always like that you get so it is important that we give ourselves too much prayer and study of the word study of the study of the word study of the word study of the word it is very 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 important it is very 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 important the other important thing is consecration Consec consecration 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 what we see what we imagine can affect our visions you get this is very important. I think there was one picture somebody said like that, that he that sees should be careful of maybe what he sees or what he thinks or something like that. Yeah. So you you are a person, maybe God regularly shows you visions, dreams and all. And you also like, and um, sorry, how did I put it through? Okay, and you are not even bothered about consecrating your heart, consecrating your spirit, man. You get, I are just... I was just careful about it that ah oh I did dream dreams I did see visions and all like that. I was just careful about the things you watch with your eyes what you see what you hear these things can actually affect our visions this thing can actually affect what we see and how we interpret it is very important Zechariah before Zechariah had that vision he was in a place of prayer yes he was in a place of prayer offering incense to God. And God showed him that vision. So it's important that we regularly consecrate our life. Like we should live a life of consecration. We should live a life of consecration. So 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 that when we're trying to interpret our visions, it won't take us more time. You get like more gra 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 gra. You get there won't be need for us to start filtering filtering. Okay okay. Before I had this vision, I watched one bad movie like that. I watched this. I watched that. So you start thinking that okay 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 because I watched this thing. It might affect my vision, but if you are living a life of consecration, it will be very easy for you to interpret your visions and all and all and all like that. I believe, um, I believe you are getting what I'm trying to say. Yes, 
like I said before, it is a medium of God communicating with us. It is not like this direct, like you are hearing a different voice, you are hearing a still voice, you are hearing this, you are hearing that. And also, when we have visions like that, God can speak to us inside that vision. We get the story of Paul's convert conversion. You saw that an angel. Oh, sorry. Okay, when God spoke to Ananias about Paul, yes, he heard a voice. You get so there are times that in, in some visionary encounters like that, a voice comes speaking to us. So the voice like now brings instructions. But there are also visions that we are not hearing any voice. You get, you are just seeing pictures. You now have to pray that okay, God, what are you saying through this vision? Through this vision, we should not just feel ecstatic about the experiences, but pray for interpretation. I trust that God will help us. God will help us. God will help us. God will help us so we don't fall into error. I trust that God will help us. God will help us. I feel like, okay with this this viewpoint of mine. We we are able to understand more about visions and I trust that God will really help us in the name of Jesus. I trust that God will really help us in the name of Jesus. So I just want us to pray. I just want us to pray, just want us to pray, God just want us to pray, just want us to pray, just want us to pray, just close us and just begin to pray, just begin to pray that God will open the eyes of our understanding, that God will open the eyes of our understanding, God will open the eyes of our understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. We will have spiritual, we will be spiritually sensitive to capture what God is revealing to us through visions, we will be spiritually sensitive to be able to capture what God is revealing to us through visions, we'll be spiritually sensitive to able to capture what God is revealing to us through visions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Okay, it's time to take our tithes and our offerings. It's time for our giving. Okay. So if you want to give your tithe and offering, the account number will be displayed on our screen. The account number is 2105797641. UBA, UBA Bank, beloved city family, just give your title and offering. So, very proud. Taking the announcement to all our first timers, if this is your first time of watching our Bible, of listening, of listening, of viewing us today, you are welcome. This is beloved city. Our Bible study holds next week on Wednesday by 9 p.m. Same time by 9 p.m. Okay, evangelism holds this Saturday by 4 p.m. Our service old by 1 p.m. at caregivers or the address will be sent to us. The address will be sent, will be on our WhatsApp platform, so you can just check our WhatsApp platform to get the address of our venue. 12 hours in tongues is coming up on 20th of August. Yes, here night old on 27th of August, two years. And Sia's mentorship comes up next month, just after Sia's night. So if you want to join more information will be communicated to us at, on how we can be able to do that, yes. And if you are also interested in joining our WhatsApp platform, our WhatsApp group, chat up, join our full media numbers will be displayed on our WhatsApp platform. So just chat them up so they will add you up to our WhatsApp platform. If you are also interested in joining our discipleship class, chat them up soon. Yes, follow our social media and at we love city community. Follow us, like our pictures and all. Subscribe also to our YouTube channel. Yes, yes. You have to subscribe. Okay, thank you. And God bless you. I'll see you next week for another lovely time. For another lovely time. Bye-bye.